Medina, also transliterated as Medina, is a city in the Hejazi region of the Arabian Peninsula and administrative headquarters of the Al Medina region of Saudi Arabia. At the city's heart is Al Masjid and Nabawi, the Prophet's Mosque, which is the burial place of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, and it is one of two holiest cities in Islam, the other being Mecca. Medina was Muhammad's destination of his Hijra migration from Mecca, and became the capital of a rapidly increasing Muslim empire, under Muhammad's leadership, serving as the power base of Islam, and where Muhammad's Ummah community, composed of both locals and immigrants from Muhammad's original home of Mecca, developed. Medina is home to three prominent mosques, namely Al-Masjid and Nabawi, Quba Mosque, and Masjid Al-Qiblatain the Mosque of the Two Qiblas. Muslims believe that the chronologically final surahs of the Quran were revealed to Muhammad in Medina, and are called Medinan surahs in contrast to the earlier Meccan surahs. Etymology The Arabic word al-Medina Medinat simply means the city. Before the advent of Islam, the city was known as Yathrib pronounced Yathitarib. Yathrib. The word Yathrib has been recorded in Surat al-Azab of the Quran, Quran 33-13. The city has also been called Taba, good T-A-J-B-A, Tabat and Tabar, Arabic, Tabat similar in meaning to the latter. An alternative name is Al-Medina and Nabawiya, Madinat Lainabawiyat or Madinat and Nabi, Madinat Lainabawiyat, city of the Prophet. Topic Overview. As of 2010, the city of Medina has a population of 1,183,205. Inhabitants of Yathrib during the era before Muhammad's arrival also included Jewish tribes. Later the city's name was changed to Medina to en Nabi or al Madinatu el Manawara, Madinat Manawara, the lighted city, or the radiant city. Medina is celebrated for containing al-Masjid and Nabawi and as the city which gave refuge to him and his followers, and so ranks as the second holiest city of Islam, after Mecca. Muhammad was buried in Medina, under the Green Dome, as were the first two Rashidun caliphs, Abu Bakr and Umar, who were buried next to him in what used to be Muhammad's house. Medina is 210 miles 340 km north of Mecca and about 120 miles 190 km from the Red Sea coast. It is situated in the most fertile part of all the Hehazi territory, the streams of the vicinity tending to converge in this locality. An immense plain extends to the south, in every direction the view is bounded by hills and mountains. The historic city formed an oval, surrounded by a strong wall, 30 to 40 feet .1 to .2 meters high, dating from the 12th century CE, and was flanked with towers, while on a rock, stood a castle. Of its four gates, the Bab al-Salam, or Egyptian Gate, was remarkable for its beauty. Beyond the walls of the city, west and south were suburbs consisting of low houses, yards, gardens and plantations. These suburbs also had walls and gates. Almost all of the historic city has been demolished in the Saudi era. The rebuilt city is centered on the vastly expanded al-Masjid and Nabawi. The graves of Fatima Muhammad's daughter and Hassan Muhammad's grandson, across from the mosque at Janet al-Bachi, and Abu Bakr first caliph and the father of Muhammad's wife, Aisha, and of Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second caliph, are also here. The mosque dates back to the time of Muhammad, but has been twice reconstructed, because of the Saudi government's religious policy and concern that historic sites could become the focus for idolatry, much of Medina's Islamic physical heritage has been altered. Topic. Religious significance in Islam Medina's importance as a religious site derives from the presence of al-Masjid and Nabawi. The mosque was expanded by the Umayyad Caliph al-Walid the first Mount Uhud is a mountain north of Medina which was the site of the second battle between Muslim and Meccan forces. Kuba Mosque, the first mosque reportedly built by Muhammad, is now located in the metropolitan area of Medina. It was destroyed by lightning, probably about 850 CE, and the graves were almost forgotten. In 892, the place was cleared up, the graves located and a fine mosque built, which was destroyed by fire in 1257 CE and almost immediately rebuilt. It was restored by Katbay, the Egyptian ruler, in 1487. Masjid al-Qiblatan is another mosque also historically important to Muslims. 
it is where the command was sent to Muhammad to change the direction of prayer qibla from Jerusalem to Mecca. According to a hadith, like Mecca, the city of Medina only permits Muslims to enter, although the haram area closed to non-Muslims of Medina is much smaller than that of Mecca, with the result that many facilities on the outskirts of Medina are open to non-Muslims, whereas in Mecca the area closed to non-Muslims extends well beyond the limits of the built-up area. Both cities' numerous mosques are the destination for large numbers of Muslims on their Umrah second pilgrimage after Hajj. Hundreds of thousands of Muslims come to Medina annually while performing pilgrimage Hajj. Al-Bachi is a significant cemetery in Medina where several family members of Muhammad, caliphs and scholars are buried. Islamic scriptures emphasize the sacredness of Medina. Medina is mentioned several times as being sacred in the Quran, for example Ayah, 9-101, 9-129, 59-9, and Ayah 63-7. Medinan surahs are typically longer than their Mecca counterparts. There is also a book within the Hadith of Bukhari titled, Virtues of Medina, Sahih Bukhari says, Narrated Anas, the Prophet said, Medina is a sanctuary from that place to that. Its trees should not be cut and no heresy should be innovated nor any sin should be committed in it, and whoever innovates in it an heresy or commits sins bad deeds, then he will incur the curse of God, the angels, and all the people. History Pre-7th century By the 4th century, Arab tribes began to encroach from Yemen, and there were three prominent Jewish tribes that inhabited the city into the 7th century CE, the Banu Kanoka, the Banu Kareza, and Banu Nadir. Ibn Qurdadba later reported that during the Persian Empire's domination in Hejaz, the Banu Kareza served as tax collectors for the Persian Shah. The situation changed after the arrival from Yemen of two new Arab tribes named Banu Ayyus or Banu Aws and Banu Khazraj. At first, these tribes were allied with Jewish rulers, but later they revolted and became independent. Toward the end of the 5th century, the Jewish rulers lost control of the city to Banu Ayyus and Banu Khazraj. The Jewish Encyclopedia states that, "...by calling in outside assistance and treacherously massacring at a banquet the principal Jews." Banu Ayyus and Banu Khazraj finally gained the upper hand at Medina. Most modern historians accept the claim of the Muslim sources that after the revolt, the Jewish tribes became clients of the Ayyus and the Khazraj. However, according to scholar of Islam William Montgomery Watt, the clientship of the Jewish tribes is not borne out by the historical accounts of the period prior to 627, and he maintained that the Jewish populace retained a measure of political independence. Early Muslim chronicler Ibn Ishaq tells of an ancient conflict between the last Yemenite king of the Himyarite kingdom and the residents of Yathrib. When the king was passing by the oasis, the residents killed his son, and the Yemenite ruler threatened to exterminate the people and cut down the palms. According to Ibn Ishaq, he was stopped from doing so by two rabbis from the Banu Qurayza tribe, who implored the king to spare the oasis because it was the place to which a prophet of the Quraysh would migrate in time to come, and it would be his home and resting place. The Yemenite king thus did not destroy the town and converted to Judaism. He took the rabbis with him, and in Mecca, they reportedly recognized the Kaaba as a temple built by Abraham and advised the king to do what the people of Mecca did, to circumambulate the temple, to venerate and honor it, to shave his head and to behave with all humility until he had left its precincts." On approaching Yemen, tells Ibn Ishaq, the rabbis demonstrated to the local people a miracle by coming out of a fire unscathed and the Yemenites accepted Judaism. Eventually the Banu Ayyus and the Banu Khazraj became hostile to each other and by the time of Muhammad's Hijra emigration to Medina in 622 CE, 1R, they had been fighting for 120 years and were the sworn enemies of each other. The Banu Nadir and the Banu Qurayza were allied with the Ayyus, while the Banu Kanoka sided with the Khazraj. They fought a total of four wars, their last and bloodiest battle was the Battle of Bu'ath that was fought a few years before the arrival of Muhammad. The outcome of the battle was inconclusive, and the feud continued. Abd Allah ibn Ubay, one Khazraj chief, had refused to take part in the battle, which earned him a reputation for equity and peacefulness. Until the arrival of Muhammad, he was the most respected inhabitant of Yathrib. To solve the ongoing feud, concerned residents of the city met secretly with Muhammad in al Aqaba, a place between Mecca and Mina, inviting him and his small group of believers to come to Yathrib, where Muhammad could serve as disinterested mediator between the factions and his community could practice its faith freely. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad's arrival 
In 622 CE, 1 R, Muhammad and around 70 Meccan Mahajiran believers left Mecca for sanctuary in Yathrib, an event that transformed the religious and political landscape of the city completely. The long-standing enmity between the Ayyus and Khazraj tribes was dampened as many of the two Arab tribes and some local Jews embraced Islam. Muhammad, linked to the Khazraj through his great-grandmother, was agreed on as civic leader. The Muslim converts native to Yathrib of whatever background, pagan Arab or Jewish, were called Ansar the patrons", or the helpers", while the Muslims would pay the zakat tax. According to Ibn Ishaq, the local pagan Arab tribes, the Muslim Mahajirin from Mecca, the local Muslims Ansar, and the Jewish population of the area signed an agreement, the Constitution of Medina, which committed all parties to mutual cooperation under the leadership of Muhammad. The nature of this document as recorded by Ibn Ishaq and transmitted by Ibn Hisham is the subject of dispute among modern Western historians, many of whom maintain that this Treaty is possibly a collage of different agreements, oral rather than written, of different dates, and that it is not clear exactly when they were made. Other scholars, however, both Western and Muslim, argue that the text of the agreement whether a single document originally or several is possibly one of the oldest Islamic texts we possess. In Yemenite Jewish sources, another treaty was drafted between Muhammad and his Jewish subjects, known as Kitab Dimit al-Nabi, written in the 17th year of the Hijra 638 CE, and which gave express liberty unto Jews living in Arabia to observe the Sabbath and to grow out their side locks, but were required to pay the jia poll tax annually for their protection by their patrons. <laughs> Battle of Badr the Battle of Badr was a key battle in the early days of Islam and a turning point in Muhammad's struggle with his opponents among the Quraysh in Mecca. In the spring of 624, Muhammad received word from his intelligence sources that a trade caravan, commanded by Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, chieftain of the Meccan Quraysh, and guarded by 30 to 40 men, was traveling from Syria back to Mecca. Muhammad gathered an army of 313 men, the largest army the Muslims had put in the field yet. However, many early Muslim sources, including the Quran, indicate that no serious fighting was expected, and the future Caliph Uthman ibn Affan stayed behind to care for his sick wife. As the caravan approached Medina, Abu Sufyan began hearing from travelers and riders about Muhammad's planned ambush. He sent a messenger named Damdam to Mecca to warn the Quraysh and get reinforcements. Alarmed, the Quraysh assembled an army of 900-1000 men to rescue the caravan. Many of the Qureshi nobles, including Amr ibn Hisham, Walid ibn Utba, Shaiba, and Umayyah ibn Khalaf, joined the army. However, some of the army was to later return to Mecca before the battle. The battle started with champions from both armies emerging to engage in combat. The Muslims sent out Ali, Ubaidah ibn al-Harith and Hamza ibn Abd al-Muttalib. The Muslims dispatched the Meccan champions in a three-on-three -three melee. Hamza killed his opponent with the very first strike, although Ubaidah was mortally wounded. Now both armies began firing arrows at each other. Two Muslims and an unknown number of Quraysh were killed. Before the battle started, Muhammad had given orders for the Muslims to attack with their ranged weapons, and only engage the Quraysh with melee weapons when they advanced. Now he gave the order to charge, throwing a handful of pebbles at the Meccans in what was probably a traditional Arabian gesture while yelling. Defaced be those faces, the Muslim army yelled, Ya Mansa Amit, and rushed the Qureshi lines. The Meccans, although substantially outnumbering the Muslims, promptly broke and ran. The battle itself only lasted a few hours and was over by the early afternoon. The Quran describes the force of the Muslim attack in many verses, which refer to thousands of angels descending from heaven at Badr to slaughter the Quraysh. Early Muslim sources take this account literally, and there are several hadith where Muhammad discusses the angel Jibril and the role he played in the battle. Ubaidah ibn al-Harith was given the honor of he who shot the first arrow for Islam, as Abu Sufyan altered course to flee the attack. In retaliation for this attack Abu Sufyan requested an armed force from Mecca. Throughout the winter and spring of 623 other raiding parties were sent by Muhammad from Medina. Battle of Uhud In 625, Abu Sufyan, who paid tax to the Byzantine Empire regularly, once again led a Meccan force against Medina. Muhammad marched out to meet the force but before reaching the battle, about one-third of the troops under Abd Allah ibn Ubay withdrew. With a smaller force, the Muslim army had to find a strategy to gain the upper hand. 
a group of archers were ordered to stay on a hill to keep an eye on the Meccan's cavalry forces and to provide protection at the rear of the Muslims' army. As the battle heated up, the Meccans were forced to somewhat retreat. The battle front was pushed further and further away from the archers, whom, from the start of the battle, had really nothing to do but watch. In their growing impatience to be part of the battle, and seeing that they were somewhat gaining advantage over the Kafirin infidels, these archers decided to leave their posts to pursue the retreating Meccans. A small party, however, stayed behind, pleading all along to the rest to not disobey their commander's orders. But their words were lost among the enthusiastic yodels of their comrades. However, the Meccans' retreat was actually a manufactured maneuver that paid off. The hillside position had been a great advantage to the Muslim forces, and they had to be lured off their posts for the Meccans to turn the table over. Seeing that their strategy had actually worked, the Meccans' cavalry forces went around the hill and reappeared behind the pursuing archers. Thus, ambushed in the plain between the hill and the front line, the archers were systematically slaughtered, watched upon by their desperate comrades who stayed behind up in the hill, shooting arrows to thwart the raiders, but to little effect. However, the Meccans did not capitalize on their advantage by invading Medina and returned to Mecca. The Medinans suffered heavy losses, and Muhammad was injured. <laughs> Battle of the Trench in 627, Abu Sufyan once more led Meccan forces against Medina. Because the people of Medina had dug a trench to further protect the city, this event became known as the Battle of the Trench. After a protracted siege and various skirmishes, the Meccans withdrew again. During the siege, Abu Sufyan had contacted the remaining Jewish tribe of Banu Qurayza and formed an agreement with them, to attack the defenders from behind the lines. It was however discovered by the Muslims and thwarted. This was in breach of the constitution of Medina and after the Meccan withdrawal, Muhammad immediately marched against the Qurayza and laid siege to their strongholds. The Jewish forces eventually surrendered. Some members of the Banu Ayyus now interceded on behalf of their old allies and Muhammad agreed to the appointment of one of their chiefs, Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, as judge. Sa'ad judged by Jewish law that all male members of the tribe should be killed and the women and children enslaved as was the law stated in the Old Testament for treason this action was conceived of as a defensive measure to ensure that the Muslim community could be confident of its continued survival in Medina. The historian Robert Mantran argues that from this point of view it was successful. From this point on, the Muslims were no longer primarily concerned with survival but with expansion and conquest. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Capital city of Muhammad and the Rashidun Caliphate. In the ten years following the Hijra, Medina formed the base from which Muhammad and the Muslim army attacked and were attacked, and it was from here that he marched on Mecca, entering it without battle in 629 CE, 8R, all parties acquiescing to his leadership. Afterwards, however, despite Muhammad's tribal connection to Mecca and the ongoing importance of the Meccan Kaibar for Islamic pilgrimage Hajj, Muhammad returned to Medina, which remained for some years the most important city of Islam and the capital of the early caliphate. Yathrib was renamed Medina from Madinat al-Nabi, city of the Prophet, in Arabic, in honor of Muhammad's prophethood and death there. Alternatively, Lucian Gubbe suggests the name Medina could also have been a derivative from the Aramaic word Medinta, which the Jewish inhabitants could have used for the city. Under the first three caliphs Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, Medina was the capital of a rapidly increasing Muslim empire. During the period of Uthman, the third caliph, a party of Arabs from Egypt, disgruntled at his political decisions, attacked Medina in 656 CE, 35R and murdered him in his own home. Ali, the fourth caliph, changed the capital of the caliphate from Medina to Kufa in Iraq. After that, Medina's importance dwindled, becoming more a place of religious importance than of political power. In 1256 CE Medina was threatened by a lava flow from the Harat Rahat volcanic area. After the fragmentation of the caliphate, the city became subject to various rulers, including the Mamluks of Cairo in the 13th century and finally, in 1517, the Ottoman Empire. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> World War 1 to Saudi control. In the beginning of the 20th century, during World War I, Medina witnessed one of the longest sieges in history. Medina was a city of the Turkish Ottoman Empire. Local rule was in the hands of the Hashemite clan as Sharifs or Emirs of Mecca. Fakhri Pasha was the Ottoman governor of Medina. 
Ali bin Hussein, the Sharif of Mecca and leader of the Hashemite clan, revolted against the Caliph in Constantinople Istanbul and sided with Great Britain. The city of Medina was besieged by the Sharif's forces, and Fakhri Pasha tenaciously held on during the siege of Medina from 1916 till 10 January 1919. He refused to surrender and held on another 72 days after the armistice of Mudros, until he was arrested by his own men. In anticipation of the plunder and destruction to follow, Fakhri Pasha secretly sent the sacred relics of Medina to Istanbul. As of 1920, the British described Medina as, much more self supporting than Mecca. After the First World War, the Hashemite Said Hussein bin Ali was proclaimed king of an independent Hejaz. Soon after, in 1924, he was defeated by Ibn Sa'd, who integrated Medina and the whole of the Hejaz into the modern kingdom of Saudi Arabia. <inaudible> Medina today Today, Medina, Medina Officially in Saudi documents, in addition to being the second most important Islamic pilgrimage destination after Mecca, is an important regional capital of the western Saudi Arabian province of al Medina. Though the city's sacred core of the old city is off limits to non Muslims, Medina is inhabited by an increasing number of Muslim and non Muslim expatriate workers of other Arab nationalities Egyptians, Jordanians, Lebanese, etc., South Asians, Bangladeshis, Indians, Pakistanis, etc., and Filipinos. Topic. Geography The soil surrounding Medina consists of mostly basalt, while the hills, especially noticeable to the south of the city, are volcanic ash which dates to the first geological period of the Paleozoic era. Al-Medina al-Munawara is located at eastern part of Al-Hijaz region in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on longitude 39, 36 feet e and latitude 24, 28 feet n. Medina is located in the northwestern part of the kingdom, to the east of the Red Sea, which lies only 250 kilometers (160 miles) away from it. It is surrounded by a number of mountains: Al Hajjaj or Pilgrim's Mountain to the west, Salah to the northwest, Al Air or Caravan Mountain to the south, and Uwad to the north. Medina is situated on a flat mountain plateau at the junction of the three valleys of Al Aql, Al Aqiq, and Al Himdh. For this reason, there are large green areas amidst a dry mountainous region. The city is 620 meters (2030 feet) above sea level. Its western and southwestern parts have many volcanic rocks. Medina lies at the meeting point of longitude 39, 36 east and latitude 24, 28 north. It covers an area of about 50 square kilometers (19 square miles). Al Medina al Munawara is a desert oasis surrounded by mountains and stony areas on all sides. It was mentioned in several references and sources. It was known as Yathrib in writings of ancient Minion. This is obvious evidence that the population structure of this desert oasis is a combination of North Arabs and South Arabs, who settled there and built their civilization during the thousand years before Christ. Climate Medina has a hot desert climate, Köppen climate classification BWH. Summers are extremely hot with daytime temperatures averaging about 43 degrees Celsius (109 degrees Fahrenheit) with nights about 29 degrees Celsius (84 degrees Fahrenheit). Temperatures above 45 degrees Celsius (113 degrees Fahrenheit) are not unusual between June and September. Winters are milder, with temperatures from 12 degrees Celsius (54 degrees Fahrenheit) at night to 25 degrees Celsius (77 degrees Fahrenheit) in the day. There is very little rainfall, which falls almost entirely between November and May. Topic: <inaudible> Religion. As with most cities in Saudi Arabia, Islam is the religion adhered by the majority of the population of Medina. Sunnis of different schools Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi and Hanbali constitute the majority while there is a significant Shia minority in and around Medina, such as the Nakawila. Outside the city center reserved for Muslims only, there are significant numbers of non-Muslim migrant workers and expats. Economy. <inaudible> <inaudible> Historically, Medina is known for growing dates. As of 1920, 139 varieties of dates were being grown in the area. 
Medina also was known for growing many types of vegetables. The Medina Knowledge Economic City Project, a city focused on knowledge based industries, has been planned and is expected to boost development and increase the number of jobs in Medina. The city is served by the Prince Muhammad bin Abdulaziz Airport, which opened in 1974. It handles on average 20 to 25 flights a day, although this number triples during the Hajj season and school holidays. With the increasing number of pilgrim visiting each year, many hotels are being constructed. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Education. Universities include Islamic University of Medina, Tabor University, Al Ryan College, Al Bayan Collegiate High Schools include UHUD High School. Abra High School, Miraz Al Iman High School, Prince Abdulmuzin's High School, Al Ryan School Community, Abdullah ibn Al Saib High School, Prince Mekran's High School. Topic: Transport. Topic: Air. Medina is served by Prince Muhammad bin Abdulaziz Airport IATA, Med, ICAO, OEMA, located about 15 kilometres from the city centre. This airport handles mostly domestic destinations and it has limited international services to regional destinations such as Cairo, Bahrain, Istanbul and Kuwait. Medina Airport also handles charter international flights during the Hajj and Umrah seasons. Topic. Rail A high-speed intercity rail line Haramain High Speed Rail Project also known as the Western Railway is under construction in Saudi Arabia. It will link Medina and Mecca via King Abdullah Economic City, Rabi, Jeddah and King Abdulaziz International Airport, along 444 kilometers 276 miles. A three-line metro is also planned. In 2018, the project was launched and started to transport passengers from Mecca to Medina and the opposite. The railway also passes by Jeddah and King Abdullah Economic City. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Road. Major roads that connect city of Medina to other parts of the country are Highway 15, Saudi Arabia, connects Medina to Mecca, Al Kamis Mushait and Tabuk. Highway 60 Saudi Arabia connects Medina to Bereda. Topic: <inaudible> Bus. Medina bus transport finds the route to the nearest bus stop and Al Masjid and Nabawi. Now, Medina has a new bus service called Tourist Bus to give a tour of Medina and its historical places including the Prophet's Mosque. Topic Tourism Topic Museums Al Medina Museum, it exhibits Al Medina heritage and history featuring different archaeological collections, visual galleries, and rare images that related to Al Medina. It is also includes the Hejaz Railway Museum. Topic. Destruction of heritage Saudi Arabia is hostile to any reverence given to historical or religious places of significance for fear that it may give rise to shirk idolatry. As a consequence, under Saudi rule, Medina has suffered from considerable destruction of its physical heritage including the loss of many buildings over a thousand years old. Critics have described this as, "...Saudi vandalism." and claim that in Medina and Mecca over the last 50 years, 300 historic sites linked to Muhammad, his family or companions have been lost. In Medina, examples of historic sites which have been destroyed include the Salman al-Farsi Mosque, the Raja Ash Shams Mosque, the Janat al-Baqi Cemetery, and the House of Muhammad. See also Haramain High Speed Rail Project Jeddah Nakawila Siege of Medina List of expeditions of Muhammad in Medina